What about the crucifix? Is it a symbol that a Christian should have around their home? Is it something that is even scriptural? We're going to talk about that in this video. And uh, I'm going to start out here by showing you a video of this Pastor Paul Begley. I like to call him Big Lie. And uh, he's there and he's talking about the Word of God and he's daring the devil and things. And the crucifix, the devil comes and throws the crucifix at him. So let's watch this video here. That's a little teaching tool we use to teach our children that you have authority over the devil. I double dog dare the devil to do what? To deal with the word of God. And that's what these guys are doing. They're dealing with the word of God. Okay. Now... If you see the video, I'm going to slow it down here and play it while I'm talking. Watch it. You can see the right-hand side of the crucifix is pulled, and then the whole thing falls down. Okay. And he goes on to say in another video here, which we're going to watch this, uh, not going to watch this part, but he goes on to say about that people are saying that it was a string that was pulled. You can plainly see it was a string that was pulled. You can take fishing line, and you can hook it up, and you can't see the fishing line. It's very easy to do. That's... This isn't some kind of a spiritual attack or something like this. And I'm going to tell you right now, if anybody threw the crucifix at him, it wouldn't be the devil because the devil loves the crucifix. Okay? He absolutely adores the crucifix. It is a satanic symbol and always has been and always will be. All right? If it was anybody throwing the crucifix at him, it would be the Lord throwing it at him. Okay? But let's look here at this one where he explains this whole thing of the crucifix and what he says is we're going to get into it then what the crucifix actually means this is at uh, the end part of this video here and uh, let's watch this in other words turn this thing he did against him upload it don't delete it upload it so i did i put it out there and either people don't believe it's real or there's a religious crowd who think, Paul, why do you have a crucifix? That's, they keep saying that's a dead Jesus. Why do you glorify a dead Jesus? I'm not, Jesus ain't dead. What are you talking about? He's alive. That's a symbol of his suffering that he paid for our sins at Calvary. Okay. He said it's the symbol of his sufferings that he paid at Calvary. Okay. And he said it's not a dead, dead Jesus and whatever else. You know, it's, it's, it's not a dead Jesus. Let me show you here. I have the Baltimore, the New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism and the official catechism of the Catholic Church right here. I have these two. Let's see what these say about the crucifix. Here we have, I'll show you here on the overhead camera, page 573, talking about graven images. We'll go down here to number 2132. The Christian veneration of images is not contrary to the first commandment which prescribes idols. Indeed, the honor rendered to an image passes to its prototype, and whoever venerates an image venerates the person portrayed in it. The honor paid to sacred images is a respectful veneration, not the adoration to, due to God alone. It says, Religious worship is not directed to images in themselves, considered as mere things, but under their distinctive aspect as images leading us on to God incarnate, the movement toward the image uh, does not terminate in it as image, but tends toward that whose image it is. Okay, very interesting, because exactly what Paul Begley says here, this uh, Baptist pastor, uh -huh, um, what he says lines up perfectly, what he believes there lines up perfectly with what Catholicism teaches. You know, it's just, a, it's a, this image is a reminder that, of the sufferings that Jesus had on the cross and did, you know, paid on the cross and thing, it's a reminder. Could you show me in Scripture where we're supposed to have a image of a cross with this Christ guy on it? Could you show it to me? Could you show me where we're commanded in Scripture to put up something like this? Hmm. Show you the New Saint Joseph Baltimore Catechism here. What they have to say about the crucifix. Page uh, 114, go down here. It says, 
uh, number 222, do we honor Christ and the saints when we pray before the crucifix, relics, and sacred images? We honor Christ and the saints when we pray before the crucifix, relics, and sacred images because we honor the persons they represent. We adore Christ and venerate the saints. Okay? And it says, do we pray to the crucifix or to the images and relics of the saints? We do not pray to the crucifix or to the images and relics of the saints, but to the persons they represent. But look at the discussion questions. I find this very interesting. Let's go down here to number 10. Would you, why would you say that a home without crucifixes, holy pictures, or statues is not truly a good Catholic home? See the question here? A home without a crucifix is not a good Catholic home. Hmm. Is Paul Begley a Catholic? Yeah. You know, see, the whole thing, how this works out is, if you're not against the Catholics, if you're saying, well, you know, okay, then, you're, then you are a Catholic. Okay? You're part of that whole universal system there. They call it the universal church. And Catholic is just a Greek word that existed before the first century, by the way. I'd like to add that in there. This, you are part of that system. If you are not against Catholicism, you are for Catholicism. Just as simple as that. Okay? But uh, let's show you, I want to show you here something else. This whole thing here, right before the, the big show that they put on over there, canonizing Pope John Paul II, uh, this, they had this wicked, disgusting, giant crucifix let me put up a couple pictures here. You can see this one. It's this curved, big curved thing, and, and Jesus is almost hanging upside down. You know, interesting upside down cross there, which the Vatican has plenty of those too. But you see this thing here, this, this bent crucifix. And again, you say, well, this is just to remember what Jesus did on the cross. Was it a curved crucifix or a curved cross that he died on? No. What is this? This is a satanic symbol. All right, and I'm going to show you here another website, um, NovusOrdoWatch.org. And this is, these are uh, pre-Vatican II Catholics. This is not a quote-unquote Protestant website. These are pre-Vatican II Catholics, and they're saying that this bent cross, this staff, is a satanic symbol. And they're absolutely right. It is, it is, a, it is designed specifically to blaspheme the Lord. And even Catholics know it. Even they know it. You know? I mean, it's just disgusting. It's a bent crucifix. And you can see these different pictures here. I'll, I'll give you the, the link to this article here that you can go and you can look at this thing or whatever. But these hideous, disfigured, bent little skeletal zombie-looking Christ and the, the cross is all bent and twisted. That's what this giant crucifix thing is meant to show. It's, it's a perversion. It's, it's this crooked, disgusting thing. And you can see in this video here, where I'm going to play this video, and old Begley is like, I don't understand why it fell down. This thing fell down right before the canonization thing and squashed a man, killed him. And it's, Begley's like, I don't know what this means. I have no idea what it means. It means God took care of this wicked satanic symbol. Let's play a little bit of this. And listen to what Begley says, too. Listen to this. What are the odds that just before the broadcast that this crucifix, 100 foot high, that weighs over 1,300 pounds, would just fall and kill a man? And this is not any crucifix. This is the one that was specifically put there as a monument unto Pope John Paul II, who is the one, along with the other Pope, that are being canonized. Folks, there's, there's something. I, 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 what? So I'm just going to leave this with you. There's something, but what? What's going on here? I, I, I don't really understand. I, what, what's the significance of this? And you want me to believe that this Paul Bailey is saved? Let me just show you a couple of scriptures here. Galatians chapter uh, 3. Here in your King James Bible. Galatians chapter 3, 
Verse 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. You see, Jesus, when he went and died on the cross, he became a curse. He took our sins upon him. He became the sacrificial lamb to take away the sins of the world. He became a curse on that cross. That was a horrible, disgusting thing that they put him through, that he went through to pay for our sins. But when he was done on the cross, right before he died, what did, what did he say? He said, um, it is to continue. You know, he's dying on the cross. He says, this is to continue. And please keep these things, you know, these symbols in your homes. No, he said, it is finished. It was a single sacrifice. Let me show you that. Back in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. I'll show it on camera here, I guess. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have no had, have had no more conscience of sins, but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Let me stop there for a minute. This is talking about the Old Testament, where they are sacrificing animals. They were they had this Levitical priesthood, and they're sacrificing animals to pay for the sins, and they were paying for the sins, but they weren't taking the sins away. That was not possible until Jesus died on the cross. See? So, in like manner, this modern day system of Catholicism over here, the Roman Catholic system of the Mass, the Eucharist, the sacrifice of the Eucharist, that whole system cannot take away sin. But they teach that there's no such thing as, okay, you've, you've taken the Mass, okay, you're saved, you're in, you don't ever have to take it again. Oh, no, 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 no. You have to continually eat his flesh and drink his blood. You know, that's why they want to keep Jesus on the cross. See, the sacrifice is not once and done for a Roman Catholic. The sacrifice is perpetual. It continues. It starts actually before the cross at the First Supper. It starts there and it continues and goes on and on and on and on and on. It never ends. That's why Roman Catholics display this satanic crucifix. They display it because the sacrifice must continue. You must continually look to the cross and see Jesus suffering. And that's why they display this satanic bent crucifix with this little anemic zombie Christ on it that's on there and he's all skinny and scrawny and disgusting looking. Why? Well, they've been killing him for almost 2,000 years eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Catholic cannibals. And that's what they are. They really truly are. When you eat flesh and drink blood, you are a cannibal. That's what you are. And you say, well, the Catholicism doesn't teach that. Yes, they do. It's not in remembrance. The sacrifice of the Eucharist is a real sacrifice. That's what they teach. And it is the real, that wine and the blood, it becomes or excuse me, the, the wafer and the wine, all right? It is the flesh and the blood. And if you say, no, it isn't, it's just, it's just you know, a piece of bread and wine, that's considered heresy. It's, just, it's a satanic, disgusting system. Let's look back here at Hebrews chapter 10. Jump down to verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins, just like the Roman Catholic Mass. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And from hence or from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering. He hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. There again, if you use one of these Vatican versions, it'll say are being sacrificed or sanctified. 
See, that's why you don't use those satanic new versions. That's why you use a King James Bible. But you see, the symbol of the crucifix is the most satanic of all because it is saying that Jesus Christ, his death on the cross was not enough to pay for your sins. He must continually be on that cross. You know, I don't believe in crosses or having symbols around my home or anything else like that. But the fact of the matter is, if you want a Christian symbol, it's an empty cross. Jesus isn't on it anymore. Okay? He was there once. Once and done. And the crucifix is a constant reminder to a Roman Catholic that their sacrifice goes on and on and on and on and on. And they have to continually come in and make sure that they are a good, faithful Catholic. But now let's listen to the rest of this little video here, and we're going to listen, listen to what Paul Big Lie says here about Catholics. Listen to this. And just, you know, don't do any bashing of, of, of Catholics or Protestants. Don't bash each other. Don't, don't go after, don't do that, okay? Just step back and ask yourself, is this a prophetic sign what you're looking at right there, is this a prophetic sign of something to do with the ceremony coming up on Sunday? Don't, don't do any bashing of Catholics. I, please don't do that. You know, just, let's not bash each other. Let's all join together and form a, a, a wonderful new world order. Yes, let's, let's, let's do that. Said, so let's not bash the Catholics. Okay. Revelation chapter 16, verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Oh, that nasty old God. He was bashing Catholics. Okay? And that's in the future, by the way. This hasn't happened yet. And you go on to read Revelation chapter 17. That thing is so obviously the Vatican that anybody who teaches otherwise is a complete, you know, they don't understand the Bible. They're not right with God either. If you're teaching that Mystery Babylon is America, you know, okay, her, her collars are what? Purple and scarlet? I thought America's colors were red, white, and blue. America's a wicked nation, don't get me wrong, but it's not Mystery Babylon. And Mystery Babylon reigns over the kings of the earth. America doesn't. And Mystery Babylon is guilty of the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus. America isn't. Don't believe anybody that's telling you. I mean, watch my sermon on the thing of Mystery Babylon. Who is Mystery Babylon? Don't believe people that are saying it's somebody else other than the Vatican. All right, that's nonsense. So Paul Begley is saying, you know, don't bash the Catholics. Don't bash them. I mean, the fact that they tortured people, you know, and, and you know, murdered Christians into the millions, tens of millions, and, and the fact that they rape small children, don't bash them. Just let them alone. Let it, Let us Catholics alone. You know, if you're Begley, it's what he's believing. Let the Catholics alone, you know. Okay, so God, you know, dropped this disgusting crucifix and flattened a Catholic, you know. But let's not talk about that. You know, let's just, let's say, I don't know what this means. I mean, the guy's a prophet. He says he's a prophet. But he doesn't know what it means. <sighs> If you have a crucifix in your home, burn it. You say, well, couldn't I just put it on eBay? And burn it. It is the most satanic of all symbols that there is. There's nothing more wicked, more disgusting than having Christ on the, on the cross yet still having to suffer. The only thing more satanic than a crucifix is a bent one, like these Wicked, disgusting, devil-worshipping popes are carrying around now. Ugh, so disgusting. The devil didn't throw that crucifix at Paul Begley. Okay. Why? It's the devil's favorite symbol. He loves the fact of Catholics believing, not saying, Jesus died on the cross once to pay for sins. 
the devil likes to see Catholics believing that Jesus has to continually suffer and suffer and suffer and that they have to eat his flesh and drink his blood to be saved. Just absolutely disgusting. Don't listen to Paul Big Lie. And if you have one of these crucifixes, burn the thing.